Is that a text from your mom, Jacob? I forgot to silence my phone. It'll never happen again, I promise. It'll and I also happen. swear to the allegiance of the alle alleged uh, individuals that we're launching straight into Korea. I mean, people, people also search for. A podcast where we uh, answer life's greatest questions by searching the internet. And today we're going into the great outdoors. Mm, yeah, not mm. an adventure. Not in reality, though, because we're in the COVID times. And in the COVID times, you can't talk to your friends, let alone go on a trip to see them. <laughs> or go on a trip together with them out camping in the woods. In all honesty, though, that's not true at all. There's plenty of people doing stuff. Yeah, you're allowed in restaurants and whatnot now. I was just at a Thai restaurant today. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Ryan. I know. Eating Thai is good. Yeah. It's a good time. Wing. You got to get that <laughs> You got to get that spice level to maximum. Oh man, one time I got the number 10 of a of a Thai, uh, it might have been like pad Thai or something, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's 10 or nothing. It was maybe. the one that had cashews yeah. in it. I'll oh just yeah, leave it at yeah, that. yeah. Uh and I got it at a 10, which was the hottest available um spice level in that this particular restaurant mm -hmm. and uh i was basically crying the entire time that i was eating it and it fucking felt fantastic you know sometimes like <laughs> crying crying can be a good thing you know it's tears of joy yeah i was crying tears of joy and pain i was crying from the ecstasy of the hot thai dish wink man what's the hottest pepper you've ever eaten I would have to say that'd be uh, the Carolina Reaper. Oh. I, I remember you giving me a piece of one, or maybe it was our other friend. Uh, oh, out when we were eating at Buffalo Wild Wings. Yep. Yeah. And I had, a, I had a piece of one, a dehydrated Carolina Reaper, and it was so hot that I felt that I temporarily went insane. <laughs> yeah, and you feel it. I think I ate a whole one. Like, I, there was probably a good 15 to 30 seconds where I was just staring off into space. I couldn't react. I had no yeah. like, thoughts or any, like, my body was not it was responding. Just, it was like in fight or flight mode instantly. <laughs> it was like I was a, in a blue screen of death like, yep. for about 30 seconds yep. when my mind just was erased. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't, it's a it's a burn that lasts a while. It was like, a, it doesn't go away. Yeah, it was a bit of a hard reboot, if you will. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need a good reboot. Yeah, you were a madman and ate the entire... Uh, pepper is yeah. probably maybe an inch and a half mm -hmm. tall. And the interesting thing about eating in one of those is you can just feel where it is in your body oh, yeah. until it's gone. Like you just you'll just notice a chunk of heat somewhere in your intestine that you have to deal with until it's immediately out of your burning asshole. Yeah, I, I'll have to say though, a close runner-up was the time that I ate a fresh habanero pepper. Oh yeah, and it was much larger. I would say it was a, a good three inches tall. Yep. And I ate the whole thing in one bite, and like, yes, like I felt the, I felt the the organism or not the organism, the organic material. The orgasm. The orgasmic organic material. Oh okay. Slowly making its way through fast. my body. The pain was imperceivable, so I could feel like traveling down. It was burning the fuck out of my like esophagus and everything in my fucking stomach, and I I drank close to a half a gallon of milk to like chase it, and my fit my oh. face was like beet red as like as red as this strawberry bubbly can. It's it sounded it sounded a. Uh, distinctly from familiar you know of uh you know you're a pain to stomach where it's just like <laughs> that elongated growl and you're just like ow ow and i had so much milk in my stomach that i couldn't keep it all down and i ended up having to throw up a bunch of milk and hot, oh hot god remnants and you i'll never tell you want spicy milk and i'll tell you what that habanero pepper burned just as much coming out as it did going in. So oh, yeah. my nostrils that were like all fucking spicy too. And it was just, it was the worst. 
That and like the acid combined with that from your stomach. It's like stomach acid and habanero heat. That's a terrible combination for the esophagus. But at least my uh, family and my girlfriend at the time had a had a fun time laughing their asses off at how in pain that I was just like slapping the table like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. My face is all red and like everyone's just sitting there laughing at me, having the best time of their lives. But you know, <laughs> what what else is family for? Yeah. <laughs> Make funny you when you're down. Make funny when you're down. But you know, they also you, they <laughs> well go said. Yeah, they go on trips with you too, Jacob. Yeah, that's what friends and family are for. Going on trips like out into the the great outdoors as it were maybe yosemite state park possibly now we can't like we usually do type when did camping start but camping's always been a thing like it's as as long as living is camping as long as there's been homo sapiens on this earth there's been camping so that that's actually how they started right yeah so whenever (laughs) yeah when homo sapiens homo sapiens when my homies started Wait, my homeo's at. Yeah, my homeo. Uh, when they started, uh, that is when the first camping trip was. So, <laughs> now- <laughs> Woo! Burning it up here on people. Also, we didn't even have to search for that one. Wow. All right. So, so you were saying Yosemite. What's the hottest camping spot? There's probably not as many in the in the COVID times. What's the hottest camping spot? Not to bring spot it down, but uh, what what are the in the U.S. Phoenix, Arizona, because <laughs> because it, it's hot in Arizona. <clears throat> Anyways, oh. and and Phoenixes they they burn. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so your search, what's the hottest camping spot in the U.S. came up with the first result here: twenty four most scenic places to camp in the United States. Out of America, coming to you from travelandleisure.com. There are some of the best camping places to camp in the U.S. from Maine to Florida. Oh, okay. Here we wow. go. Here we go. Oh, there sure are. Oh, this looks like a regular old Bob Ross painting with some happy trees here. I feel like a lot of the imagery today is going to be like a Bob Ross painting. Welcome to the chance. podcast about Bob Ross and camping. The answers to life's greatest tr- camping spots in the United States. <laughs> we'll move on to the rest of the world later, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the United States, you got Acadia National Park in Maine. And that's located on the Mount Desert Island. Acadia National Park is the Pine Tree State's natural drool, uh, jewel. <laughs> David Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> the park boasts 17 million acres of forest, 6,000 lakes and ponds, and 32,000 miles of rivers and streams to offer a scenic backdrop to your hiking and camping. Oh. Sounds. Well, uh, since this is a podcast, I guess we'll have to describe some of the imagery that we see here. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's a, it's a forest. It's the woods. <laughs> yep, it's the woods. Uh, no Slender Man to be seen it's here. It's not even a thick wood. Like, you can see past the wood, so the trees aren't dense. It's We're not, not talking the Amazon not forest. Not too here. much wood. Yeah. Although, as I've admitted on a previous podcast... Uh, you like a lot of wood. <laughs> Carry on. Yep. Ryan just made a gay joke. What? Anyways, <laughs> maybe I was talking about how you secretly always wanted to be a lumberjack, Jacob. Mm, I mean, I have a beard, so mm-hmm. I'm halfway there. You yeah. have a beard. You look like a man who could wield an axe. So, and I ha- and I own a flannel shirt. So what? You're halfway there. All Moving you need to go is spin on a log in the l- river, and you're good. Spin on a log. Remember, we talked about log spinning as a story oh, spin- on the podcast. I thought yeah. you said spit on a log. Yeah, you could do that too, but then it's going to be even harder to stand. Fuck on. you, log. I just can't. You're no longer a tree. You're a log now, and you just spit on it. Yeah, and you don't even harvest the wood. You just let it float down the river. Yep. Fuck you, log. I'm a lumberjack just for fun. Yeah, and then the <laughs> beavers take the log and they turn it into a dam and it floods your town because the river is too, fl- like... Well, to be perfectly honest, though, Ryan, it's quite the opposite for me because what I did admit on the podcast was that 
The woods are a little creepy to me. The woods are creepy. Camping's just, creepy. I mean, just think about all the horror movies that are set like out in the woods or like in 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 fucking uh like Hilljack land. Oh man. Like yeah. the Rob Zombie the movies. Is fever. Devil's <laughs> Reject. Oh, holy shit. Oh, Devil's Rejects, yeah. I don't want to or, or um um House of a Thousand Corpses. You oh know, yeah. I I just think or like Evil Dead. That's like a creepy cabin out in the woods. I think about fucking Slender Man and shit. It's like, no, I'm, I, I ain't about that life. But I have been camping one time. One time? Yeah. Only one time. Was it real camping? <laughs> Was it camping in a tent with, like, a can of beans and a knapsack type camping? A can of beans. Mm, it was more like uh, in a tent and having a bunch of alcohol with your friends. Hey, that's... That's like modern day camping. Yeah, I, I I seriously only I only camped out one time. Was it in your backyard? <laughs> you never camped out in your backyard when you were a kid, dude. No. Oh, okay. I never. I actually have never owned a tent in my life. <laughs> Whoa! What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do if you get thrown out into the streets? Uh, find a cardboard box i guess <laughs> yeah that's the way of the the real creative individual oh, you that's... make a place you don't buy a i don't tent. even want to think make about a house i don't even want to think about being homeless like i feel like i'd kill myself before i lived the life as a hobo but luckily i, I don't know I, I i would try it out but luckily i have a, a, a loving family that would any of them give me a place to lay my head before i went homeless true so i'm i'm feel you know privileged that i have that so you know some people aren't so lucky and that's just dude being homeless is just like permanent camping maybe they smoked so much crack that their family (laughs) couldn't live with them any longer (laughs) (laughs) so i know but but you know we're not crack users here on people also search for yeah i've never even seen a crack i'm known to have Maybe a couple drinks on the weekend, but, you know, nothing nothing too terrible. Yeah, only getting a little bit frigged up. <laughs> Not maximum uh, frigged up, you know. No, I mean, I've had my days in the past. But <laughs> like, <laughs> you see, I've had my day. I, 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 I can't have that much fun these days. Yeah. You know, i got to be a responsible adult. I've got bills to pay. I work <laughs> a professional job. A professional job. Oh, man. Professional jobs at setting up a tent, which I've never done in my life. I mean, we could, right here, right now, look up how to set up a tent so you know. We, we you know, we got to go down to the foundations of camping. It's not just plug in how your, do you... your air blower and fill up an inflatable bounce house in the woods. Mm, no. <laughs> Why? Fact, I'm sure that it could be. You just get a generator. But that's not fucking... pitching a tent, dude. You gotta talk about pitching a tent. I've pitched a tent before. And so you pitched pants. a tent, but you never set up a tent. Oh, <laughs> shit. You know, when you wake up and you got that morning hard on Yeah, when you shit? get that morning pitching log floating down the river. Where do you set up a tent? <laughs> <laughs> People also ask, where do you set up a tent? Yeah, I mean, you got to nice. know where to set it up before you know right. how to set it up. Let's so get serious. We're, we're, we're literally teaching you in order how to camp. Make so yours camp- buy a tent. Make your camping trip a smooth one and avoid any disastrous setup issues by following these tips for finding the ideal camping spot. Number one, choose flat ground. Number two, avoid hills. Number three, consider sun exposure. Four, consider wind exposure. Five, be close to water. <laughs> Can't go without that good old H2O. Or a shower. <laughs> well, that's debatable. <laughs> Don't want to stank it up, dude. <laughs> oh, wait, actually, I lied. I've been camping twice in my oh, life. Oh, okay, okay. Although, the first time it was, like, in a nice cabin, like, with a, a church. I mean, organiz- that still kind of counts, but it it's was, not, it was, that's not what I consider and real I think camping. It, I think it was up to, like, three days, so... I mean, there's something to be said. That's more like vacationing in a cat, like a hat, like a, and, it's just like a hotel. I mean, and I totally neglected the second, uh, suggestion here for not having disaster setup issues, which was, I didn't avoid Hills, which is number two. 
I nearly slid down a hill to my demise. Oh, <laughs> that, well, oh that's why you remembered you went camping again. Because you know how, like, trails in the park will have, like, I don't know. It's kind of like a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? A switchback, you know, where you kind of go diagonally down and down and down, like, the side of a, a hill. Yeah. Like, down to a river. Or oh, something. yeah, 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 yeah. And for whatever like you're reason, running away from a crocodile or something. Yeah, and for whatever reason, all the campers uh, and like the camp leader or whatever decided that it would just be faster because I think it was about to rain. They just would go straight up the the um what what would you call it the like side of the hill instead of going Peninsula? instead of going back and forth up the switchback. Oh man! And it was probably uh, that's it was a good a, way to flip your care. It was a good eighty degrees, I would say. Like it was basically like you know, it's not an ideal place to camp. Jacob. It was it was climbing like almost straight up a hill. So if it if it started raining and being windy, your tent would have slid down the hill. And being a chubby, like out of shape, like little kid. Uh, I, I found it a little bit difficult to like hoist myself up the side of the hill with like the trees that were coming out of the side. And, uh, yeah, I, I almost like lost my footing and like had to like catch myself like with my arm strength to stop from like sliding down the hill backwards. Oh my God. Yeah. And so I was like holding onto a tree. I'm like, ah, oh, I can't get up. And like th- there had to be like two people that like hoisted me back up to my feet to like get my footing. So if I would have slipped all the way and didn't catch myself, you know, I could have probably gotten like seriously injured, like a broken back or a leg or something. So it was a little bit scary and a little bit freaked up. <laughs> so maybe that's what, maybe that's one thing that, you know, prevented me from doing a lot of camping. Mm. Also, I know like some, a lot of people like in the Midwest, like they have, you know, families that like do outdoorsy stuff like camping and hunting and fishing and stuff. But like I, I didn't grow up in a family that did any of that stuff. So, oh yeah, I so didn't I never really either. Yeah, I never was like exposed to like doing camping trips or anything. Yeah, I mean, I went camping a few times. I think I've went camping with like groups of people though, where it was like a bunch of like kids and like camp counselors essentially. But we were like yeah. camping in the woods. That's kind of how. It was when I did the church thing, but I was only like 10 years old, I think. So, or maybe I was 11 or 12, but you know, it was like a three day thing where we all went there on a bus and it was like, I mean, it was a legit like cabin in the woods, you know, where you have like four or five other guys, Yeah, you know, well, we actually like you. pitched tents when I went and did that. Oh, okay. we, like we, everybody had to bring a tent and then we were all on the same campground, but we were still camping. Yeah. See, I did. Uh, the only time I camped out in a tent like i just slept in my friend's tent mm. and we made sure peepees were facing the opposite direction of each other <laughs> oh, yeah. as young boys do but it's it like was you a... can't have your peepees touch <laughs> but it was like a pretty well we weren't young boys like this is you know when i was like legal 28 drink, drinking age no i was probably like 21 <laughs> like 20 yeah that's pretty good yeah that's tw- a good time to go camp let's say i was at the least i was 21 <laughs> oh yeah but um yeah i mean it was a pretty big tent it was pretty cool like i didn't even have to set it up or anything because it wasn't mine oh that's the most convenient then i don't think i should actually i think it was only one night to be honest yeah we just um... <laughs> but i still don't think i showered for weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm sure i showered when i went home I was <laughs> well the thing is if you stank and you were like disgusting you could just like say like oh I was just out camping I haven't showered yet yeah but you were like literally only camping for a day but you didn't shower for like two months <laughs> <laughs> listen mother I can't shower because I just went camping I need to keep that nature on me so it absorbs into my into my uh epidermis i feel like i've been claustrophobic by spending too much time on a man-made indoor house and spending time in the woods has turned me into a man (laughs) man. i definitely was like mostly like an indoorsy i don't know i I went outside plenty when i was like i liked hiking a lot but i didn't i don't think i camped that often i definitely camped more than two times probably made like 10 times i've been on many hikes 
you see oh yeah <laughs> through the desert and through the sea oh no not in the sea i just wanted to make it rhyme with the previous sentence sorry i'm sure you've never been in the sea i'm sure you've been in the sea people camp at the sea dude camp at the sea. oh yeah, like oh, on the beach on the like, seashore yeah on the seashore no i've i've never i've never stayed overnight on a beach <laughs> oh man it's a good time and until you get sand in your dangus and then you're like <laughs> fuck sandy sand my ding dong and people are like what and you're just like oh i didn't realize i said that out loud <laughs> yeah Ex- excuse me while i go oh, to the bathroom change my trousers i got sand in my narrow urethra oh. <laughs> it's clogged up <laughs> i got sand in my pee hole and then you unclog it and it looks like a fucking anthill ah oh, the fuck oh uh, yeah oh, man that that took a turn for the worse <laughs> Anyways, you want to be close to water? You want to camp in the forest? Camp in the snow? No, you don't. Why would you? How is camping in the snow a smooth <laughs> way to avoid disasters? It's like you can freeze. Well, there's a dot, dot, dot after it, so I don't know what uh, type of Eskimos live in the snow. So I guess it's okay. Don't leave your mark on the land. Isn't that right, Ryan? You yeah, wanna... you don't want to pee in the. <laughs> you want to leave nothing but. Uh, wait, you, you want to? I leave think me? it's mostly like don't like no, this, bring a bunch of packaged food. There's a litter saying all over the place. Yeah, there's a saying though. It's it's uh, leave only footprints, take only f- uh, memories or some shit. Leave only footprints, take yeah. only memories. Look That's that beautiful. Leave oh my. It's like some like stupid aphorism, you know. Leave only footprints. Oh, there's even a movie. Take only yeah. memories. That take only photos or take only pictures from the Nat Packer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. The quote is from a Native American chief. Chief Seattle. Oh, it's he, a not very uh, Seattle? He is a like famous Washington? 19th century Native American who came from the Duwamish tribe. He was such an important figure that the city of Seattle is named after him. Whoa! Whoa. You oh. learn something new every day. That's crazy. You learn something new every Tuesday. Just like on old People Cincinnati is here in Cincinnati. Yeah. That's pretty unique. Porkopolis. <laughs> <laughs> he was such an important figure. Okay, yeah. He was highly respected leader and ecologist. Chief Seattle pursued the path of mutual respect. And cooperation between native, uh, between natives and European settlers. Famous speech about ecological responsibility and the natives' land rights is attributed to him. Although its origins is lost and changed through translation, <clears throat> excuse me, translation and writing, rewriting that is. That's beautiful, Ryan. That is good old Chief Seattle. Mm. Have you ever been to Seattle, Ryan? <laughs> I've never been to Seattle, Jacob, but I've heard that it's one of the nicest places to live in the United States. It's one of the most expensive places to live as well. So if you're not Just rich. ask Fraser. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, I hear the blues are calling to salads and scramble days. What's <laughs> coming, Nicky? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm glad you put the bow on it. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> going again. Oh, fuck. The Frasier is a good show, Ryan. That's one of my yeah, favorites. I think I love this. I just love that theme song. Oh, yeah. I, lo- I I think I may have seen every single episode of Frasier. What? That's what you were doing instead of camping. Yeah. You were watching Frasier. That's okay. Then I was playing Dance Dance Revolution, <laughs> which is not nearly as cool. Uh, debatable. What you you think that there's like that dance dance revolution could be like less cool or more cool than Frasier? No, no, I just think that maybe some people would be like dance dance revolution's definitely cooler than Frasier. Yeah, well, we should start a poll at some yeah, point but- and it's just like. How, it's, how- Okay, what's cooler, Dance Dance Revolution or Frasier, and see who votes for the but other Ryan, one. But, Ryan, the, the big point you're missing here, and is what my takeaway from it is, yeah. you know, on a personal level, is you were burning cows, bro, and I was sitting around watching TV getting fat, <laughs> <laughs> eating T-Bell. 
That's true. <laughs> I, oh, I was definitely still eating tea bell. The tea bell is never like you know. Let me tell you a story. Real everyone's quick. always still eating a little bit of tea bell. Yeah, you never. <laughs> the tea bell never leaves you. If you've had the tea bell, you're gonna go back one day. Or it's another. always there by your side, even yeah. if you're vegan. Yeah, that's true. You they get a they bean upgrade. Burrito. And it's one of the healthier options when it comes to fast food. I've heard they have a nutritionist. <laughs> I think uh, most restaurants probably do, but uh, sorry, you were going to tell Dude, me. Dude, they have I... a fresco menu, for God's sakes. No, that is true. Can't debate that. You were going to tell me a, an anecdote, I believe, about about tea bell Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to tell you a story about the tea bell because, you know, it's been near and dear to my heart for a long time. And one time, when I was a child... I was at this like really fancy fresh like French restaurant, and I was there with my family. Do you remember the name? I have no idea. I was like really Fuck! little. I was re- <laughs> no. Go ahead. I was really little. I it was fancy enough where they had escargot. Did you have to? Was there a dress code? I think there may have been a dress code. Mm-hmm. I don't. If it was truly fancy, that probably I don't would remember. Have a dress code. It was a, I was like probably like six or seven. You don't wear the right dress attire. You can't come in here. You can't go. Boop. You can't eat at this uh, fucking. Is, you can't eat a uh, French cuisine. They did a lot of eating French cuisine on Fraser there, Ryan. They did. Oh yeah. Wow. They That's would. Uh, they would drink sherry and go to. La Petite Jejoie or whatever the fuck the restaurant mm-hmm. was. And they would they would even have caviar from time to time, Ryan. Yeah. Caviar. Caviar is that's, disgusting. That's fucking something. That's fancy as heck. Eggs, right? Isn't that like that's fish unfertilized eggs? Egg? Oh. Yeah, they're fish eggs. <laughs> it's literally like a jar of like little black fish eggs that looks I, like jelly. I'm so adverse to salt that I can't even eat olives, let alone fucking caviar. There, I yeah. would never be able to eat that shit. But so, know. you went to a French restaurant. Went to a French restaurant. Real fancy place. Expensive, you know, like a nice place. Get a filet mignon and go boop! Yeah, you get whatever you want. In fact, it's like they could they would make it fresh. They, they could make anything. But you told them what to do. And they served you. The top quality five-star food. But what happened was, <laughs> I was like pretty picky. And I love Taco Bell. So, when well, I was, didn't we all as a kid? Yeah, but so like we're at this really fancy restaurant, and I was like, I don't want to eat anything here. Wait, what? What age were you? I think I was like probably between. It was some like six between six and seven or six and eight, maybe. Oh, okay. And I was like, I don't want to eat anything here, and like, and they were like, well, just try and pick something. Like they were trying to like pick something like that, that I would eat, and I wouldn't eat anything, and then basically like the chef in the restaurant of like this really fancy restaurant comes out to our table because i didn't order anything and is like offering to make me like the simplest like it could be anything that a kid would eat and he's like i could make this he's like i could make this it's like and then i was like nope and i was just like to this french man that's like a master chef i was like nope i want taco bell what is this Taco Bell? Yeah, exactly. And, and I was like, nope, I don't want any of your food. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Taco Bell. So like, and uh, and I, it, I didn't eat anything there. And then I got Taco Bell directly afterwards. Like I gave up that opportunity, and I probably made that Frenchman feel horrible. Oh, poor Frenchman! It's like your your five star French cuisine is nothing compared to the delicious gordita crunch. <laughs> Were you on that? Uh, C- C- oh, I always forget CGC? My... Yeah, the CGC. CG Gordita Crunch. Were you on that CGC at that young of an age? No, no. I didn't know about CGC until like my, probably like my later teen years when I would go there like with my friends and I didn't get kids meals anymore. Oh, yeah. Although I would say out of all the restaurants, uh, I would say Taco Bell seemed to always have really cool toys. That's true. Like, I remember, like, I actually have one of them still. It's like a Star Wars thing from, like, Empire. Uh, and it's, like, it's a cube that has a mirror inside of it. And one half of it, it's Darth Vader. And the other half is Yoda. Mm-hmm. I want to just, I just typed in best oh, Taco yeah. Bell toys yep. real quick. Yeah, they because... had Mario one. I actually still have my Mario from Taco Bell as well. I'm just going to go to the images and see if we can Man, see it. Do I... oh. Getting all nostalgic up in here. Yeah, they got a Yoshi. 
They've got uh, oh, they've got. A, I remember this. They had a little plush of the yeah, Yo Kiro Taco that. Bell dog. I had that, and you know who did the voice of the Chihuahua? Who? The guy, um, the Mexican guy on Reno Nine One One. What really? He's, that guy's a stand-up comedian and a voiceover artist and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was also in Reno Nine One One. I think his name was Officer Garcia in the show. I don't remember his actual name. The only person I ever remember their name of is John, yes. like John Lennon, for some reason. Or not John. What? <laughs> Tom Lennon. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> John Lennon. No, I, I, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah I Thomas know. Lennon. He does a lot of shit. That dude is. That that guy's got hustle all day. That was real guy. <laughs> just like, Ryan just <laughs> like going off on his hand and looking at Taco Bell food now, just being like, "Oh man, I'm about to eat the shit out of that I'm gordita." That. I'm gonna get that after this podcast. <laughs> it's like, yo, I really? give me a chalupa, give man. me a Thai food and ch- T Bell in one day. I'm more of a burrito man though. Burrito man. Uh, I like that they have like the double decker like nacho ta- like it's a taco that's got like the hard shell and the soft shell and it's got cheese between oh, them. Oh, they made like man, we're oh man, we're fucking fatties on this show. <laughs> they made a we like Taco Bell, dude. They it's made fine. a new uh, like dollar like mini cheesy gordita crunch. Wait, what? Yeah, it's like it's called like the uh, I don't know, it's cheesy crunchy. Taco or something? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. same thing? Yeah, yeah it's the same it's like, thing. It's a dollar. It's so good. Is it good? Yeah. Man. But it's, it's not a gordita. It's just like a soft. No, it's like a, it's like the regular hard tacos, but it has a soft shell around it. Okay. So, so yeah. There's something about... There's cheese holding them together. There's it's something amazing. about the gordita texture. I, the gordita texture is good. It's like a pillow. Combined with the crunchiness. Yeah. But, but the crunchy part is also kind of like like soft and like chewy because of the cheese god damn it i think my favorite texture fat. is i think my favorite texture is the chalupa look though. fat look the chalupa yeah you know look. you're gonna be going to talk about yeah. after this i don't know why that's not what he sounds like that's a combination of biden and trump yeah that was weird sorry everyone um Man, now I want to get that out. Well, the, the thing is, like, <laughs> oh. you got to have convenient food when you're out camping. So, you know, sometimes if you're out camping, you just bring Taco Bell with you. You know, it, it keeps. <laughs> for, for real. It you just don't, if you're gonna If you're going to keep Taco Bell overnight, don't get something with, like, vegetables on it. Though. Like, if you get the lettuce, like, you... That's already not good quality lettuce, so like I don't uh, you don't you I don't, don't think ca- it does keep if, if you got a fucking <laughs> beefy five layer burrito and you brought it camping with you like you, a little cooler, you'd be perfectly fine. Are you for real? Yeah, dude. You can definitely eat it, as long as it's not like three uh, days later. It's like you, if you bring in it for the next day. You I don't know because one time Imagine sitting around a campfire <laughs> eating a goddamn cheesy gordita crunch with your friends, having a Baja blast. <laughs> Yeah, having a Baja Blast with your friends, man. Oh, man, having a Baja Blast. That's definitely the episode, dude. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, would, what would you have? Like, what else would you have at a campfire? If not Taco Bell. Mm, s'mores. S'mores? And we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> but I... I will have to say, I one time I got one too many items at Taco Bell. <laughs> I've done that way more than once. <laughs> <laughs> well, I or or maybe I just wasn't as hungry that day. But um, so I had like a like a leftover. I think it was a cheesy bean and rice burrito, mm-hmm. and uh, I just kind of kept it like at room t- like i didn't refrigerate it i just kind of like put it to the side you know like put it back in the bag and just kept it yeah and i i ate it like like four or five hours later and that just ugh, it was fucking nasty as fuck like, yeah and i like i i felt like it would dry it out too much if i would have microwaved it so i just ate it at room temperature and it like really wasn't even warm at all, and I it was just like oh fuck, it's fucking nasty. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm like, then I'm like, just like so mad at myself because I'm like, ugh, 
Why did I even eat that? This, this reminds fuck. me of <laughs> this reminds me of when I was a kid. Man, I'm going into my childhood a lot on this camp show. Uh, I, I was a kid and I, I was hanging out at a friend's house, and their house was kind of like disgusting. And like they they had like all their really laundry good. in their, <laughs> their bedroom, but like it wasn't like a small amount of laundry, man. I'm talking like there was laundry. it was a Chris Chan level of laundry. There was laundry pouring out of their closet, like like a waterfall man like the laundry and okay think about it like this the pile of clothes was like almost at the top of the closet going down at a fucking 45 degree angle <laughs> out of the closet like a fucking ra- like skateboard ramp yeah of laundry. yeah coming out of their closet like in their <laughs> bedroom right and like so they had a lot of clothes but didn't clean any of them and it, it appeared like or or just I, I don't even they know. They just bought new clothes when they're when they yeah. didn't have clean laundry anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and what happened was I I was in their room and then their mom like made them clean their room or something while I was over at their house cuz like I I don't know, maybe they didn't have people over often and they were pissed off that they had that much laundry <laughs> in their fucking room while like they had a guest over. But I told you to pick up that fucking laundry. So I'm sitting there like playing like video games and the and because that, that's what I went over there to do. And they were, like, started cleaning their room and, like, just putting all this laundry away. And he's he's going through this giant pile of laundry, like, throwing shit in a hamper. And he fucking finds in the load, like, the giant pile, like, <laughs> in the load, he finds... <laughs> Stop an, saying he, load. <laughs> within the load, he finds a <laughs> fully wrapped up Arby's sandwich. <laughs> swarmed like, in cockroaches yeah no well no it was like wrapped in the the foil or whatever so like it Aww. it was perfectly fine but what happened was like he ate it he didn't yeah he did not know when it was from <laughs> like that's how long this laundry had been sitting there when he found this sandwich within it so oh man he didn't remember oh, i forgot it. about that beef and cheddar yeah exactly <laughs> i think i actually think it was a beef and cheddar <laughs> but like he fucking takes the sandwich and he fucking opens it no Oh, and? and and like he was just like looking at like we were all looking at it to see if it was okay and he he fucking tastes it dude. Oh, he no. tastes it it wasn't good though he fucking <laughs> threw it away immediately it wasn't good though no shit <laughs> yeah Woo! but I was like how do you have so much laundry in your closet that you fucking leave an Arby sandwich in the laundry, cover it with more laundry, and then forget that you ever bought an Arby sandwich in the first place. <laughs> Woo, that is a little bit freaked up. That was like when I was like 13. Oh, man. Man, like, that, that Arby sandwich was on a cam and trip in hell. Did you hear about the one, uh... Like lost, like McDonald's burger that was found like under the grill that had never been moved. Wait, really? And it was like, it was like green and like hard as a rock. <laughs> Just search like world's oldest McDonald's sandwich. <laughs> world's oldest McDonald's sandwich. Yeah. Um. Oh wait. Oh boy. What is this? David Whipple of Heber City, Utah, purchased a hamburger at McDonald's on July 1999, and it remains intact. (laughs) One Utah man's prized possession is turning 21 this year. Dude, he can go out for drinks with his hamburger. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, it's drinking age now. And it's a hamburger. <laughs> David Whipple claims to own the world's oldest hamburger, which he says he purchased at McDonald's on July 7th, 1999. Hmm. Man, that is disgusting. That's the definition of saving it for a rainy day. I kind of want to see a picture of it. Is that it? Go on images. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Whoo, that is, is nasty. that him sniffing it? He's sniffing oh. it, dude. Ew, why would you want... I I get maybe oh. keeping it as a memento, because that's just weird. You get it. <laughs> I get being so attached to something that you want to buy it and oh. let it... Like, like as, as in, a, like, a collector. Like, you collect something and then you keep it forever. But uh. why would you take the bun off and sniff it? Like, that's gross. Like, oh, that looks man. rancid. You can, like, see where the onions are and, you like... You can see how happy pickle. he is. 
Oh, that's fucking disgusting. I wonder if he like rubs <gasps> it on his lips too and like oh. salivates over it. Yeah. God damn it. All right, that was. He uses it like a flashlight. That was a worse idea. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that has nothing to do with camping, but you know what, what you might have around a campfire, you know, would be s'mores, right? We were going Oh yeah, to, like yeah. I said earlier. Yeah. 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 And actually why I wanted to do the camping podcast in the first place is because I wanted to know like who was the man or woman <laughs> that first made a s'more. So who made the first s'more? Who made the first s'more? I mean, it was a great invention. Oh. Oh, somebody did. Okay, they know. It was a lady. Loretta Scott Crew. No one knows for sure who invented the s'more. However, the first recipe for some mores <laughs> <laughs> was in a 1927 publication called Tamping and Trailing with the Girl Scouts. It says tramping and trailing. Tramping and trailing. Not tamping, like tampons. Oh. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, Ryan. I'm sorry. I mean, they could be tramping around, too. Like, that's also in the gutter. It says tramping and trailing. That's, that's... the name of the publication. All right. Well, Loretta Scott Crew, who made them for Girl Scouts by the campfire, is giving credit for the recipe. So some random person just had these by a campfire, like had marshmallows there. Well, I... You know what? It goes beyond the s'more, Jacob. You got a Who, graham cracker, you got a piece of chocolate, you got a little fucking marshmallows, and uh, you got both. No, no, you got to know. <laughs> Who cooked the first? A little bit of fire, marsh- you know, make it a little bit melty, Mellow. and then uh, you go both. Loretta Scott Crew. C- 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 On a fire. Crew. She, uh, you know, she uh, went both. Oh, dude, we found it. CampfireMarshmallows.com, the history of the marshmallow. Oh, uh, wait, of the marshmallow? Yeah, because we need to know, because that's the best part about camping is the marshmallow. I got to say, I at one point I started a list of things that I love and things that I hate. And I got to tell you, something about a good old bag of jet puffed marshmallows just can't beat that you smell can't. it's good i don't know why and like you know all I, the raw marshmallows i'm not a huge fan of i really only I, yeah like i don't even marshmallows. i don't even really care how they taste like they're fine but i just love the smell of like a bag of marshmallows it's just like ah it's, yeah, it's just so particular but anyways well this is a deep history jacob 2000 bc ancient egyptians discovered i thought a, you were about to start doing uh christopher walken because you were like 2000 BC. bc ancient egyptians dis i can't do a fucking christopher walken ancient egyptians, egyptians discovered a I wild herb either. growing in marshland marshland from which a sweet <laughs> substance could be extracted <laughs> this substance <laughs> sap of the marshmallow plant is combined with a honey-based candy recipe to create a confection so delightful that it is reserved only for the pharaohs and the gods whoa so wait there's a marshmallow plant it comes from the earth willy wonka (laughs) that's what it sounds like it's from take a look and you'll see a world of pure masturbation then you You will come (laughs) With your friends oh. in sensation. Oh, man. Yeah, you went there. I just, I just yes anded that shit. Yeah, you really did. <laughs> oh, for man. better or for worse, yeah. you really yes anded. All right. Well, in the 1800s, candy makers candy in France. In the 1800s, the marshmallow sap with. <laughs> egg whites and sugar and whip by hand to create the first marshmallows as we know them today. (laughs) The Uh, treat became so popular so quickly that candy makers developed the starch module system (laughs) using cornstarch molds to form the marshmallows so they could be made faster. Oh, wait. It says that they were medicinal candy sold to soothe sore throats and suppress coughs and heal wounds when they were meringue. Get your marshmallow here. Yeah. Step right up, one and all. Cocaine-infused marshmallows candies. It'll make you feel good. 
When was uh um it might be on this Wait list. wait wait here's the s'more thing though 1927, 1927. The Girl Scout and book is the first publication to share a recipe for roasted marshmallows combined with chocolate bars and graham crackers. What we know is a s'more. So as far as I'm concerned, tra- <laughs> traditional camping as we know it today started in 1927. Because I it remember wasn't camping until when there was chocolate a was invented. I remember chocolate. <laughs> I always hated it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah, so but, that was in 1927. Then, yeah. 48, we got Alex Dumit, son of the founder of Dumit, Inc. Uh, the makers of campfire marshmallows patterned with the marshmallow extrusion process, revolutionizing marshmallow production by making it fast and efficient. In extension. Oh, nope. Sorry, that's in extrusion. The marshmallow mixture is pressed through tubes, <laughs> cut into equal pieces, cooled, and packaged. This new process allowed enough marshmallows to be produced that they became an everyday sweet treat for and staple for family favorite recipes. <laughs> yeah, well, the, here's the thing, though. That was, the company is called Campfire Marshmallows. So yeah, that's not the one I'm interested it was, in. It was obvious. I'm about that Jet Puff life, dog. Yeah. Jet Puff probably came a little... See, we, now we're on today. Today. So we got uh, whether mini or giant, marshmallows are an everyday sweet treat and staple for fav, uh, favorite family recipes from roasting over a campfire or cereal treats to snacking and crafts. Campfire marshmallows add little fun to everyday life. I've definitely made some mallow crafts as a child. Oh, yeah, like where you would like take toothpicks and then combine them and do like a little... Sculpture of a man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or like a little Michelin man or something, or a little like a fort that you've imagined, or a snow-covered landscape with a <laughs> gingerbread house. That's yeah, that's literally just you pour marshmallows all over your table. I don't know it's a snow-covered landscape. I, I don't know how often you travel past the the Mallow aisle of the grocery store, but there's a couple of brands. There's. The ones that Jet, Jet Puff made, like the most popular ones from what I, you know. Jet Puffed. They make flat ones now specifically for s'mores. Really? Yeah, they're like flat. Oh, that's convenient. They're like flat, square. Oh, man. Oh, so stuff puffed. puffed. Just want to fucking touch them and smell them. <laughs> do, you, do you like marshmallow fluff on a sandwich? I like marshmallow fluff and peanut butter sandwiches. I've never put it on anything. I've. Oh, well, the marshmallow fluff isn't like a regular marshmallow. It's like a spread. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I know you make it to make a Rice cr- Krispies treats. So yeah. it's Kraft that makes the Jet Puffed ones. Yeah. Thanks, Kraft. Kraft makes mm. a good mallow, for sure. Like, I'd rather fondle a bag of marshmallows than actually opening it and, like, eating them. Yeah. I actually hate the texture of marshmallows. I think they feel terrible until you oh, really? cook them. Because once they're cooked, they're all melty and good. The best way to cook a marshmallow is to take it, light the thing on fire so the outside gets like like kind of blackish and then immediately blow it out. Yeah. And then the whole inside is just like that perfect goo and the outside is crispy. It's it's amazing. <laughs> it's got that char taste, you know. Yeah, you really. <laughs> from the natural flames. You really summed it up. I fucking I, love that. I, I think I've only made s'mores like a few times in my life, but I've always hated like getting me- messy and like any type of like messy food. So yeah, yeah, I never loved s'mores too much. I mean, they taste pretty good, but they taste good. They make your hands feel bad. If I'm like a stickiness that just doesn't go away. Well, yeah, easily. and you're like <clears throat> you're probably outside. Like you know, so, a couple of the times that I made s'mores, I was like. You know, in somebody's backyard, so you can go inside and wash your hands. But if you're camping, I'm gonna pass on those s'mores, bro. Cause yeah, I, there's nowhere I, to wash your hands. I'm getting that shit all over my hands, dude. I want a s'more right now, though. Like that sounds so good. That sounds. I f- I th- I think I would like to try like a spoonful of marshmallow spread. Yeah, it's or good. F- marshmallow. Oh, I don't know if you'd want a spoonful of it. You'd probably eat it on a sandwich or something, cause it's it's pretty dense, like. Like it's it's like peanut butter. Like you get it in your you get it in your mouth, and then like it's kind of hard to swallow by itself because it's so sticky. Yeah, I've 
I've also put in like you know put a bunch of the big like the jumbo marshmallows you know when you play that fucking stupid fuzzy bunny game oh yeah i've never done fuzzy bunny i've done that and they you know it would chubby bunny chubby bunny chubby bunny whatever they the biggest marshmallows used to be like maybe an inch and a half like the the like big ones and now they have ones that are like twice that size oh then there's too much mallow there's only like 15 of them in one big bag because they're so fucking giant and yeah and there's something to be said about this i like that they're making custom s'more marshmallows now because there's a big there's a definite uh marshmallow to graham cracker ratio that needs to be met like if you have too much mallow on there like <laughs> that's yeah. that's not good like it squeezes out it's all over your hands you can't even eat it as a sandwich at that point yeah. With me, it's one regular size marshmallow, one one piece of a Hershey's bar, and then two graham crackers. That's like it's traditional and simple. Yeah, that's yeah. You know, gotta go with uh maybe a little know. bit of peanut butter. That gotta go with that nineteen twenty seven shit. You know, man, I've never done that before. I need to do that peanut butter on a graham cracker, and then a piece of chocolate and a marshmallow cooked over a fire. Did you ever do? A peanut butter on a celery stick with raisins on it. You mean like the little ants on a log or whatever <laughs> yeah, it is rolling down the river? Ants on a log. Yeah, that's what? a that's a camping snack. An ants on a log. You eat ants on a log when you're camping, almost exclusively. Yeah, maybe have some bug juice to or, wash it or down, or like at uh, at the side of a pool, like in the summertime or something. I could see you eating some ants on a log at a pool. But you want to make sure you wait 15 minutes before going back into the water. <laughs> that way you won't get cramps. Yeah. Nobody wants cramps. Leg cramps while swimming is terrible. Or toe cramps. And then you might drown. Look at the giant jet puffed marshmallows. You got to see how big they are. Giant jet puffed. Oh, puff my jet. Giant jet puffed. The jumbos. Jumbos. It's hard to tell from this image how big they are, though. Yeah, just go on the Google Im- images. Oh, okay. I'm sure there will be plenty of different. Yeah, Target. I'm not trying like, to side by side comparisons. Okay, images. We gotta have like a size comparison or something. Oh, that. Wait, there we go. Wait. Giant roosters. <laughs> Those aren't the jet puffed ones, but. It's probably similar. It's, yeah, comparison. it's huge. It's like fucking. Oh wait, here we go. I found one. Oh, ah, perfect. Jumbo mallow. So you got your mini, your regular, and your jumbo. You know, regular is the perfect size. Yeah, that's the s'more size. But now they make flat, like square marshmallows. That's just too big. It's like what the is... size of a Rubik's cube. <laughs> like what? You're not putting that in your mouth. I want to put one of those jumbo ones in my mouth. No. And just, like, let it melt. I feel like I would rather take, like, a, I would rather drink a glass of the marshmallows from Lucky Charms than put one of those <laughs> in my mouth. I don't think you can drink Lucky Charms marshmallows. Yeah, you can. You put it in a glass, and I'm saying, like, drink a glass, of, like, eat a glass of them, like an entire, like, cup. The jumbo ones, like, I just, like, I don't know. You got to... You gotta pick up that bag and just... It's not for sleeping on, Jacob. That's your sleeping bag, like... <laughs> That's my sleeping bag. Yeah. That'd be probably pretty good to sleep on a jumbo bag of marshmallows. I don't oh. know. Maybe as a pillow... But if you put a pillowcase <laughs> around it, I feel like the bag would be sticky from the marshmallows and then, like... And you're heating it up with your head. Yeah, and then you wake <laughs> up and your hair's covered in goo and you're like, Jimmy, why'd you come on no, me? It, it, <laughs> it would be like a fucking waterbed pillow like it would just be all melted into one goo by the like by the time you wake up so it's just yeah like like it's just like a big it's like a lava lamp it's like a marshmallow i I don't that's but it wouldn't be like a lava lamp or like one of the like a water bed it would be like goopy and disgusting it would feel like one of those like a bag of icing or something (laughs) well i don't want to sleep on that I mean, you know, especially you, when I'm out in the woods, you'll never know unless you if, try. The bag, <laughs> if the bag breaks open, your hair is effed, man. Yeah. You're going to wake up covered in goo. You never want that. Well, that might not break. The chances are likely. <laughs> Just search. Can you sleep on a bag of marshmallows? <laughs> can you sleep <laughs> on a bag <laughs> of marshmallows? 
Oh, oh the first thing that came up is the jet puffed marshmallows, though, because yeah, they're it's gigantic. Just a, it's just the result of... Wait, Pinterest.com, you used to be able to sleep in a giant bag of marshmallows. Wait, what is this? What? Oh, it's... Oh, oh man. This, okay, dude, this relates to camping so hard. This is pretty good. Not only... Could you sleep in a giant bag of marshmallows? But the giant bag of marshmallows is a sleeping bag for oh, camping. It's so cute. Wow. It looks like it's from like 1975. Whoa, it was you only $14.95. A craft marshmallow slumber bag, only $14.95. Man, you can't get a slumber like a, a slumber bag for I, a less sl- than <laughs> you can't get a slumber bag for less than like twenty dollars even at your local yeah. Walmart. Oh, that one's like the inside of a body. <laughs> Whoa, that's uh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> he said slumber bag. I love it. It is a slumber bag. But oh yeah, that's what it says yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says slumber soft- bag. You got to think though, like this is what you're saying. This is great marketing because like <laughs> these people clearly took the idea like kids know that marshmallows are soft and they probably had the thought, you know, it'd be like nice sleeping on a big old marshmallow bed. They made it happen, and they made it so that you can go camping in your favorite marshmallow treat. Well, so you go camping with your marshmallows, you get in your marshmallow slumber bag, you cook up your marshmallows, you get sticky shit all over your hair, and then you go home having a great time. Yeah. You got marshmallow fucking fluff under your fingernails and shit. I think you know what it's time for now, Ryan. I might know. <laughs> We're going to find out if uh, we can get... This very sleeping bag, or slumber bag, as it says, for fourteen ninety five today. Oh yeah! It's time for people also search for uh, a- auction. Oh yeah! The auction is right. Do 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 do. Yeah, let's. Okay, okay. So we eBay. got. So we gotta go to. We gotta go to eBay. Oh, before we go to eBay, though, we're gonna have to put in our bid. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pull up the website. Get ready for this this <laughs> search. Cue it up. Okay. So now we're in here. Okay. So we're gonna look for the exact crash craft marshmallow slumber bag. <laughs> I might even type in four only, not fourteen ninety five. Nah. You oh, okay. Know, just yeah, put that in, might screw up this. Just search. put in craft marshmallow slumber bag. Okay. Slumber bag. Oh my. Craft. Marsh. My slumber bag is nice and warmed up for you. Slumber (laughs) bag. All right, I'm going to guess it's probably going to have to be more than the original price. There's no way. It's still $14.95. And we're looking at good condition, not like covered in urine or something. (laughs) We don't want big pee-pee stains on it from camping and not Uh, lining your slumber bag with that plastic stuff. (laughs) You don't want... Old used up depends inside of your slumber bag. Oh man, you don't want to find some kids like high school uh, sweethearts condom oh. up in there from when they went on a camping trip after oh, prom. Oh my god, you had to take it all the way to the end zone there. Yep. Um, I'm gonna say you can get one. I would say that it can be used, but it's just not in terrible condition, right? Um. Yeah, it can be used. Just it can't be like disgusting, because then it would. That, yeah, that's gonna bring. We'll the value say used, down. but in good condition. I will yeah. say you could probably get one for forty five dollars. Oh man, that's close to what I, I was gonna say thirty five ninety nine. That might be a close one. It might be, but, but we'll find out if yeah. we can even find one. So for, what was yours? Forty. I said forty five. Forty five, and mine's thirty five ninety nine. <laughs> <gasps> oh! oh the value has not increased Damn. much 1980 craft marshmallow ad give them sweet dreams craft marshmallow slumber bag you can buy it now pre-owned and pre-owned. in good condition yeah for 16.99 which is <laughs> like three dollars more than the original one. wow dude you can't even get a new one for that cheap like wow these things are that's impressive. Not yeah, I might buy one. <laughs> that's a good deal. I'm gonna buy one, and I'm gonna also buy a used tent. And what's crazy is that's the only one on here. Yeah, that's sweet. There's only one. It's the exact thing, and it's only seventeen dollars. Well, we'll see who who gets it, Ryan. I'll, I have to drive home, so you might have a a head start on me. But hmm, it's tempting. Well, Jacob, it does come with two. 
<laughs> no, I don't think. Oh, it's, or or it's one. That's but just two the sides ad. of the. Pu- oh. Yeah. Why don't they have a picture of the actual item? Is it the red marshmallow one or the blue marshmallow one? Mm, I like. The this blue. is starting to seem fishy. I want to see a photo. I don't know. It's just this is it. Ooh, there's only the one photo. It's of the original ad. Maybe they were like, "Wow." Oh, it says Craft Marshmallows ad. Oh, it's not even. For it's the... literally just the page Man, from a so magazine. These might be priceless. You might not be able to get one anywhere. We might have to go to Google and see if that can find us one. Holy crap. Damn. So you can get the ad for more than the original slumber bag. I don't even want to imagine how much the slumber bag costs now. Ooh. If the ad is seventeen dollars, I, I might still be able to be the winner, Ryan. Okay, craft <laughs> marshmallow slumber bag. Craft. I don't know why slumber bag sounds so weird. <laughs> it does. Me. It doesn't sound. I do, It doesn't sound right. Yeah, I, I always say sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah, that's how I've heard of it. Um, vintage Whoa, craft mini jet the, marshmallow sleeping. Look bag. at that dinosaur sleeping bag. It's one hundred and nineteen dollars. What the fuck? It's fucking stupid. It's expensive. Okay, nineteen. Uh, oh wait, that's the ad. These are Pinterest, Walmart. Um, the only this vintage craft mini. Maybe this. <gasps> we did it. Wait. Yeah, that is one. That's one. Oh, there's two. They have both of them. Oh, it's sold out. But how much did it sell oh, for? Man. Uh, pricing and history. Uh, is there a pricing and history? Oh, you have to sign in to see what it's worth. Fuck. Damn it. Because it's stupid. Worthpoint.com. How do you sign in? Ooh. Yeah, I don't think we're going to put in any credit card information here on the show. Let's just say $40 and split it between the two. <laughs> we're all winners here today on People Also Search For. Yeah, sometimes you tie. Ah, dang it. Oh, wait. Marshmallows with the ultimate sleeping bag? Am it's I... on Pinterest, though. It's not. Yeah, it's... Oh, it's just a picture of the fucking ad again. Um, how about this? How much is a sleeping bag? I mean, people are going to need them to go camping anyway. Because I, I don't think that, I think that they're more than $15. There's now. a, there's a sarcophagus one for $717. Whoa. It's like a ancient, like it's an ancient Egyptian, like mummy sarcophagus. This one's like $750 too. Oh, it's because it's the North face. Yeah. That's the dinosaur one you were talking about. It's 90. That's a different dinosaur one. Oh, Okay. Okay, well, here's the thing. You well, you can get, get one, one on Amazon for 20 bucks. <laughs> you can get one on Amazon. You can get one on Amazon for 20 bucks. <laughs> um, yeah, for 20 bucks. I mean, it might not be the best quality, but the end of the night it might be like there and yeah, you go boop. It might uh you might feel like you're sleeping on the floor, but what else is camping about than sleeping <laughs> outdoors on the floor looking up at the stars and the night on sky? On the floor. I love when people call like the ground Earth. outside like the floor. Like I I just love that. It's so funny cuz I always think to call it the ground and not the floor. I just feel like the floor is anything I'm like, currently have you ever, standing on. Have you ever seen like a, a, like a parent like saying like, "Get off the floor," and they're outside? <laughs> it's just yeah. like so. I'm like, oh man, that's fucking so funny. I mean, me. get off the ground sounds weird. Why? Get off the ground. I guess I don't know. It's just, I think of a when floor, I say get off the ground, it's more like jump. Like, uh, all right, let's put let let's put this to rest and and. F- Search for the definition of floor. Because I thought a floor had to be man-made. Floor definition. About to find out. The lower so, surface but, of a room on which one may walk. I guess so, a floor. Of a would, room. Yeah, yeah, it's in a room. He so. dropped the cup and it smashed on the floor. But what is outside if not just a big room, Jacob? It's not. It's 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 ground. It's not a floor. It's a spherical. You're right. You're celestial right. body <laughs> what i said was incorrect you would get off the ground not off the floor is another word for floor or what is another word word for floor under people also ask what's another word for floor oh man if it says ground i'm gonna i'm gonna lose my shit <laughs> oh okay okay another word for floor basement canvas Cellar, flat, boards, carpet, downstairs, landing. Oh, there's 18 more rows. 
These don't all mean floor. No. No. Can't. Be. <laughs> Level story tier. Bed, bottom deck, mezzanine, et entresol, stage, base, basement, boards, canvas, carpet, cellar, doors, downstair, <laughs> flat, landing, mat. Yeah. Nadir, rug, story, surface, upstairs, piano, noble, lowest point, layer, bank, row, line. <laughs> but did you notice that it doesn't say ground anywhere on there? Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. As a <laughs> noun, ground. The lower surface of a room on which one may walk, ground. Well, yeah. Groundwork, flooring. That's a synonym, I guess, but... Yeah, then again, I don't know how, uh... 